quick introduction of the uh, Lindex Nick and Tinder machine tending robot uh, in front of a UMC 1000. This can be a new machine, new machine purchase, or an existing machine purchase. Um, so we'll go ahead and throw the tender in here. As you can see, it looks like other tender layouts we've discussed. Now we've got our shelves and our, our FANUC robot here. We'll utilize the side window for the uh, where like the pallet pool would go. And this configuration is nice because it puts uh, the machine control and the tender HMI on the same side and fairly close to each other. So there's a lot of movement back and forth by the operator in one spot, uh, a little bit more efficient and, and work friendly. Uh, similar to, similar as in exactly like, other tender platforms, uh, we have three pallet options. Now these are, you know, the the robot's role in this, in the tender platform is to pick in place. It doesn't really care what the pickup is or what the place is or what it's carrying. But our standard offering and standard like, hey, this is an introduction would be uh, three six by six pallets on a shelf. Now, obviously, you could put six by six pallets on every shelf, on every face. It doesn't matter. Um, the the HMI is, uh, you know, you basically you click a button, you you click two or three options and tell it whether it's picking up three, two, or one positions. So six by six, six by ten, and a nine by twenty option. Um, now we've been talking a lot, and uh, firearms is is on the topic a lot. So uh, when you get your imagination involved, and you change the shape of this pallet a little, realizing, you know, we can't build a fixture that goes through this shelf. Now, theoretically, we can take out a shelf, so your fixtures can skip a shelf. And uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So, this would be a concept uh, four-sided tombstone since you're we're loading into a umc uh, or fifth axis uh, we can index to get access to these faces so you can put four glock slides or pistol slides if you will um, onto one pallet and it would sit inside the six by ten pallet uh, position and then the fanic would pick it up and, and move it into the into the UMC for for production so if we really wanted to see what that part density would look like just from a visual standpoint uh, we could easily do math that's 10 um, we have five shelves to these tombstones so that's 10 tombstones per face we've got four faces uh, so that is, which one did I miss? That's 40 Glock slide, or that's 40 tombstones, and we multiply that by 8. Uh, it's 320 Glock slides inside this one, um, this one parts, this, the tender base. So, I, you know, I don't know what the cycle time is, probably, let's just pretend like it's 30 minutes. So, I should have done this math before. It's 160 hours of cycle time sitting right here in this, in this parts tower. So, that's pretty significant. Six days, almost a full week. I can't imagine that uh, we would need to add more part density. However, um... You know, this is a high mix, low volume platform, so we don't always just pitch the solution focused on one product because then we would be putting ourselves back into a, um, we'd be putting ourselves back into like a monumented setup, and that's really not where we want to live. We've developed and put a lot of money into. Our user interface, uh, you know, call it a conversational programming. Basically, 
It's, uh, I think it's five questions to set up a new program. Obviously, it can run old programs, so you can say run the Glock slide, run the, you know, medical wrist part, or run the the aerospace turbine, whatever, whatever you've got in there, you can save that program name. But um, the idea here would be to be able to move quickly and efficiently from part to part and, uh, you know, maybe having three times... early in the morning so that's 20 60 so maybe having 60 pallets in the in the tinder base is all you'll ever really need but in case uh, in case part density is a concern we can add an additional parts tower now this is a perfect example of removing every other shelf the shelf pitch between our tender base and our parts tower is different. Uh, this tower is not as tall. We only went for five shelves. Um, this tower is taller. We have six shelves. I believe the spacing here is like six and a half inches. Over here it's uh, seven and a little bit, I think. And so because of that, the top of this fixture runs into the bottom of the shelf. So this is a perfect example of how we can load, you know, a different variety of parts. Now this is your electrical cabinet. If we look from the top view, things get real close here. Um, whoops, that's the UMC. If I come in here, I can show you the robot reach real quick. So you can see, we can probably move this parts tower a few more inches. But realistically, oh, we're coming in here, and we could probably move it away from the from center line just a little bit more. But ultimately, uh, this parts tower might need to be over here a little bit more just to give this electrical box room to move around. But um, you know, this is cheaper than adding an aftermarket the tender base. It's cheaper than adding an aftermarket pallet system, and it gives you more part, more part density, more parts in queue, more pallets in queue, ready to do their job.